Welcome to Riverside Park, Yankton, on the banks of the Missouri River for the 2021 Hyundai Archery World Cup Final. It's the 15th edition of this event and today we'll be featuring the compound if events and it's just a few weeks since the delayed Olympic Games concluded and just days since the World Championship Finals finished right here in Yankton. Now it's time for the season finale. Well, the conditions here in Yankton through those World Championships, which finished just a couple of days ago, were that the wind picked up later on in the day, and that is what's happened here. The weather is not too bad. It's pretty cool. But coming up in this session, we will have the Elite Eight in the Compound Men's Division. The quarterfinals, all four of them first, and we will shoot right the way through to the individual medals here at this season finale. I mentioned there are eight elite men in this lineup. Let's go and take a look at them. Jose Boschatsky, Slovensko. Matthias Fulton, Denmark. Adrian Gontier, France. Federico Pagnoni, Italy. Chris Schaaf. The United States. Abhishek Kormann, India. Mike Schlosser, the Netherlands. Brady Galantine, Team USA. Well, there we have it. Eight of them ready to go. And our first pairing coming out. It is the reigning champion right there from the Netherlands going up against his opponent from France and we'll go down to the field of play for the athlete introductions. Quarterfinals time. The compound men. Well, no time to waste here. It is Mike Schlosser, known as Mr. Perfect on the circuit for his high scoring archery. World number one at 27 years old goes up against the world number 11, the 29 year old Adrien Gontier from France. I'm Karen Bashir, and joining me as ever is former world number one, Nikki Hunt. Nikki, Mr. Perfect, reigning champion, and surely he's the odds on favourite as the world number one. Yeah, he has got to be the favourite for this event. He's won it twice before, so, you know, can he get to his third? Well, we are ready to get underway. The compound men's individual here at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals is going to begin with Mike Schlusser. Start from both arches. Already got their sights in. Well, the standard very high. Five ends of a cumulative score, 15 arrows in yeah, total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect 30 for yeah, Mike yeah. Schlusser. Good start for him. Maximum score through an individual match like this is 150 points. And the scores just keep building, and at this rate, they're going to be building up to something pretty massive. What a start from this pair! Yeah, I mean, we expect, um, you know, these guys to be shooting at this level. It's the top eight in the world. It's going to be high level and really you can't afford to drop any points, especially not against Mr. Perfect. Well, Mike Slusser did win this event back in 2019 in Moscow up against one of the other contenders in the lineup here, Braden Gelantine. And 
He needed an eight. Oh, sorry, he needed a six to win. Shot. Uncharacteristic eight to take the title. What a performance from him. Nicky, can he do it here again in Yankton in the USA? I mean, it's absolutely possible, but there's a huge lineup here. Uh, Braden himself has won two before as well, so he'd be keen to take the title. All right, some big lineups, four really special matches, all with their own little tale to tell. Here, Mike Schlosser is up against a game. Adrian Gontier, the pair, have scored a maximum so far. 30 apiece. Schlosser to shoot first in the second. Both these archers, I think, are shooting a thumb trigger. So any long holds as they settle, full draw. Trying to keep the bow still as they can to aim. So dropping points for the first time. Just the one so close as well to the 10 ring. But yeah, 59 for Schlusser. Gontier with a chance to take the lead. And he does. And look at the grouping. Nicky, you're always banging on about groupings. <laughs> Pretty fantastic for Adrian Gontier. Absolutely. I mean, a, a group is what archery is all about. You can move a group anywhere. Just move your sight and move that group around. The arrows are spread out. It's much more difficult then to get them all in the middle. So, yeah, grouping is key. And just outside the 10 for Mike Schlosser, you know, th the group there looks fantastic as well. It's just that one is outside that black 10 ring. It does. You can see within that black 10 ring, there's a finer line, a sort of grade line. That's what we call the X ring. It's still a 10, but in a qualification round, we score X's. So that if we get two people on the same score, we tell them apart. But the group size of Mikey there was the size of the X. He just needs to bring it down and to the right a little bit, and they'll be all right in there. We talked about the quality, uh, and we expect high quality here. Dropping a single point in a match like this. <laughs> I think that's the French expression for few. <laughs> what has happened? Am um, I in the lead here? <laughs> yeah. uh, and, th th and that's the point. The, the, the quality that we're expecting from all eight of these archers means that dropping one point could mean the difference between going on or going out. Absolutely. Well, this time it'll be Mikey Schlosser to shoot first, but not because he was nominated to, but because... He's trailing. Yeah. Quite follow through, isn't he? You can see his thumb go onto the trigger and then a massive follow through with his back arm kind of swinging round. Look at Mikey. Much smaller movement, just going behind his neck. Well, you coach uh, a high level. What, which one do you prefer? What it, it's all about that back tension. I think um, Gontier is a little bit manufactured in that you know, we can just see his kind of uh, elbow open up, can't we, and a massive swing of his arm. So it's a little bit manufactured. We're looking for lovely back tension and then that shot just breaking and it being a natural reaction. Another perfect from Mr. Perfect. Adrian Gontier on for a max of 90 here. Bit of a longer hold this time. And he has put it into the nine as a result. And just like that, we are all square. The archers are shooting at such a high level. Both of them have only dropped a single point. Yeah, I've got to remember we're shooting at 50 meters here, 80 centimeter face, so 
<laughs> they just make it look so easy and we forget how far away those targets are. You can see those flags blowing as well. And uh, oh, it has been a factor here, the wind, but so far, so good for these archers. No real heavy wind conditions. This is, of course, the last day of the season for these compound archers. The very last competition. We've waited an awfully long time for sport to get back on the road. And, well, I like the number seven bus. You don't see one for 18 months, and then three come at the same time. The Olympic Games, World Championships, and now, all within a few weeks, the Home Right Archer World Cup Finals. It's a feast of archery. So starts the fourth in the middle of the target. Pretty nice and still, wasn't he? Solid shot. There's no movement at all, but I can assure you there's a little bit. Well, another perfect. So that's three from Schlosser. Eight for Gontier, and look what that's done to the scores. All of a sudden, Mike Schlosser is two ahead, and we just have three arrows left for each of the archers. Well, you may have noticed there, there's a Schlosser in the coaching box as well. That will be Mike Schlosser's wife, Gabby, formerly Gabby Bayardo. She's there supporting her husband at this unique event. Just eight archers in each of the disciplines qualify for this competition. Pretty tough to qualify for, and then when you get here, pretty tough to win it. And the quality of the archery has been absolutely spectacular. Yeah, just looking through these slow mos again, seeing that shot kind of break in. Gontier seems to be going high. I think he's almost looks like he's just dropping his release down a little bit, just popping them high. Yeah, two of them in that end going into the nine ring. Perhaps the second one off a of ricochet. Trailing as he does, Adrian Gontier will shoot first in the fifth. He needs to get back into this early. Oh, has he over adjusted? On the other way. Pressure off. Mike Schlusser. Yeah, he's just looking a little bit shaky. Nine starred. Better shot, better timing, look more solid. Needs a big shot here to put at least some pressure on Schlosser. Oh, another nine for another 28. So only an eight required for the win. Neither of them have hit an eight in the competition so far. Schlosser puts it in to the 10 and books his place in the semi-finals here in Yankton. And only drops two points on his way to a 148. Looking pretty happy about that. Well, handshakes all around, or fist bumps as they are these days. Gontier started so well, but just fell away at the end. Jack Schlosser, well, 
He had some issues. We got confirmation here of his win. He had some issues at the World Championships, didn't he? Yeah, and that silver medal, uh, gold medal match, he took the silver. But he just started to look uncomfortable shooting a, a one four three. Uncharacteristic for him. You know, we call him Mr. Perfect because so often he shoots those 150s, 149s, and yeah, it's see if he can hold it together under a bit more pressure. I don't think Gontier put him under too much strain towards the end, um, but it'll be interesting to see how he comes through these next couple of rounds. Yeah, certainly will. Mike Schlosser himself has said that he's experienced some issues uh, with what I'll just call target panic during the uh, COVID restrictions. He kept shooting as much as he could, but clearly motivation is a big issue for sports people who can't go into the heat of battling competition and then he came back and just struggled a little bit hints of that at the world championships but nothing showing so far today for him he is through to the semi-finals time now for the second Compound men's quarterfinal. And another matchup between two athletes with a bit of difference between them. Let's go down all their introductions. Shooting on target number one, representing Denmark, Matthias Matt Ice Fullerton. So here we go, 45 years young. World number seven, Joseph Bozanski from Slovakia, goes up against the youngest man in the field. It's Mateusz Fullerton of Denmark. And boy, oh boy, oh boy. Mateusz Fullerton has burst onto the scene this season, Nikki. Yeah, he really has. He didn't attend the first World Cup, but the second one, he made the final four. Okay, he got fourth place, but he got a real flavour of what it's like to be on this final stage. Youth versus experience in quarterfinal number two here in Yankton. Fullerton versus Bozanski. And it will be the Dane to get us underway. What a brilliant start, straight in the X-ring, looking confident. Martin Damsbo stood behind him, offering some positive words. Bozanski looking cool and calm. Trigger, thumb on the trigger. Goes. So dropping into the nines for a 29, not a bad start for the 18 year old. Bazanski can take an early lead here though. And he does, just in the line, and that's enough for a 30 and the Slovakian has started ever so slightly better than the Danish teenager. Nikki, any signs of uh, any differences in technique or any, any issues they may be facing? Uh, just differences in technique. Um, Bozanski, hopefully we'll see on the replays um, what we call a puncher, so a conscious uh, decision to shoot the bow so got his thumb on the trigger and then you can see a big movement to set it off and you know it's pretty calm out there right now that might work and you know he may do very well with it so let's see how it progresses well, encouragement there from martin downsbow as nikki mentioned he's there in the box winner of the this event in 2013. Not a bad man to have in your box. Well 
So here we go. Second end. Fullerton trailing. Bazanski here, if you watch his thumb going onto that trigger and watch his thumb movement, makes that shot go off, a conscious decision. James Lutz, very famous for the same kind of technique, does very well with it. I think Fullerton's, I think he's shooting hinge, it looks like his thumb's on it and it's kind of coming off as he expands and uses his back. Very different techniques. Watch that thumb. Yeah. Nice. Fullerton starts with his thumb on that peg, wrapped around, and he starts to release it. And as he pulls, it's going to set that release aid off. Very different. Well, another 29 for Fullerton, so an opportunity for Bozanski to open his lead up. Oh. Exceptional shooting from the Slovakia. He's hit a perfect 60. 58 ain't bad <laughs> unless your opponent is perfect. It's interesting you talk about the the uh, the releasing and and the, and the way that the archers go through their process, which we've talked about before, is very unique. And they all they have to do is do it the right way for them and keep doing it the same way every single time. Um, but y there's you've informed me that there's quite a lot of difference in terms of the strategy, the philosophy of the two different kinds of shooting. Fullerton's allowing the equipment to do the work. Yeah. And Bazanski is is more forcing. Yeah, he's more in control of it. So two schools of thought, I guess. And obviously we've seen both work. Uh, Bazanski deciding I'm going to shoot now. And that can work great because you wait until your dot is in the middle of the target and you push the trigger and it goes in the 10. But, you know, longevity of that sometimes under pressure, that can become very difficult because you're consciously having to do it. Nikki likes to be delicate with her wording. She doesn't like a puncher. So she prefers Fullerton's approach. Fullerton, though, is trailing here. 60 to 58, start of end number three. Would your toes curl up and you start gritting your teeth if you say, I, and I said to you, I quite like a puncher. <laughs> yeah, I always say to people, like, don't start shooting compound until you see me <laughs> first, because as soon as you start doing it, there's kind of no way back. Well, dropping his very first points. chance here for Fullerton to get one back and he's back into the 10. 29, three of them in a row. Bozanski needs a 10 to maintain his two point lead. And he goes into the nine, so 28 for him. And there's just one point in it. The puncher, Bozanski, is still leading and only by one. Nikki, just want to go back to this because, in all seriousness, you know, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Of course, you know, <laughs> but you've explained to me very eloquently the difference between the punches and 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 the one and the ones that push and just allow the 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 arrow to fly naturally, and the more traditional uh, philosophy or coaching philosophy. And I can now see that. But explain why the punching is not such a great thing when it starts to go wrong what what is the reason that it's not a great philosophy well uh, the best example i can give you is probably natalia valeva earlier in the session the women's session um we saw some flinching and that is your brain anticipating what's about to happen so brain thinks it's going to go off well if it goes off i can relax so the body starts to flinch beforehand that can lead to obviously not aiming in the right place and can go further and cause real problems well there you go uh, so you see it really is a, a difference of philosophy because you just need to absolutely be on it if you're a puncher. Matthias Fullerton here, the Dane has clawed back one point of the deficit and puts it into the 10 to start end number four. Just 
Just watch that back elbow because it just kind of came off a little bit, losing his kind of back tension that he does have. So Fullerton very different then. So thumbs coming off and he's all he's thinking about is a big global movement through his back. That one didn't quite work out for him though. I mean, he, he clipped the nine, so he's definitely got the nine, but that went a long way off his other arrows. Yeah, it did. Oh. Mm, now, is wind a factor here? You can see the trees moving a little bit. A little bit of shaking. I think that's more the factor. Finishes with another 29. That's four in a row for him. So consistency. Uh, 10 means a two point shift in favour of Fullerton. And right at the last, going into the last end, Fullerton has snatched the lead with a crucial time. And a 27 for Bozanski. So is, is this potentially where you th you're saying things could go wrong? When you tighten up, that, that if you're a puncher, if you're forcing it, and you're under pressure, this is where the mistakes can come out. Potentially. I mean, Bozanski's first arrow, I thought I could see his back elbow. Just watch his elbow. Does it come around a little bit just as he's trying to release? So did that, you know, push him over to the left a little bit? So the idea with the back tension is you're just doing the same thing. You're keeping your brain on a big global movement. You get balance, pushing and pulling. It breaks and it goes off where you're aiming it. But, hey, these guys are under quite a bit of pressure. There's quite big checks at the end of this. And, you know, <laughs> both of them want to win. And... Wow, what, what an environment to try and hold your nerve. Yeah, we're just looking back at those replays. You actually saw that second arrow from uh, Mateus Fullerton. His expression would suggest that he was the one that made the error. And then when you look at Bozanski's first and second arrows, they're actually quite tightly grouped. So perhaps not mistakes, but just uh, aiming. Well, Bozanski is now behind. We're going to the fifth. So watch that back elbow. I think it's just coming around a little bit. Well, doing what he needed there. Big score to put pressure on the Danish teenager. Fullerton shooting with a fiver pen. You can see it wrapped around his scope. Bozanski shooting with a dot. So again, differences in their aiming techniques as well. This is the last arrow of this quarterfinal from Joseph Bozanski. He needs to be a big one to put some pressure on his opponent. It is a perfect 30. He's back in the middle of the third one of the match for him. But a 10 will do it for Fullerton. And it is a 10. A beautiful finish from him. Four 29s followed by a flourish in the final. And a perfect to take a 1-4-6, 1-4-5 victory over Joseph Bozanski. And very popular young man, Mateus Fullerton, the 18-year-old, is through to the compound men's semi-final here in Yankton. That's going to be a while before you can take the smile off that face. Nicky, he... Looks solid, couple of stray arrows, but he knew what he was doing. And the great thing about him is he just bounced straight back. He didn't dwell on it. Exactly, yeah. I think he was just saying to Martin Damsbo there around his release and just focusing on that a bit more. And perhaps that's where he let him down and a few points go away. But one exciting 18-year-old who burst on the scene after practicing hard through the COVID pandemic and has come out on top. take a look back over some of these shots you can see how well peppered that center of the target is for the pair of them straight one over into the eight for Bozanski other than that he was pretty close as well both finishing with a perfect but it's that man there 18 year old Dane Mateus Fullerton who's into the semi-finals
of the compound men's competition here at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Final. Time for quarter-final number three, arguably the toughest of the lot. Well, it's another big one here. Compound men's quarter-final. India will take on the USA here in Yankton, South Dakota. Well, arguably the toughest draw of the lot. We had the draw just yesterday evening, and when Galantine came out of the draw first, there was an audible sigh of relief from Mikey Schlosser and Chris Schaff, knowing they wouldn't face one of the other big contenders for this title. But then when Abhishek Verma's name came out, an ultimate name to come out of the pot against Galantine, we knew one of the big names of compound archery was going to go out in the quarterfinal. This is a huge matchup, and there's another massive contrast. It's all seriousness on the American side. And Abhishek Verma is all smiles, shoots for fun. Archery is all about what works for you. Galantine's been supreme with his serious approach. Verma the same with his smiles, but it's Galantine who'll get us underway. Looks a bit amused. Does look a bit stunned, didn't he? Trust and adjust if it was a good shot, movie sight. Verma moving around a little bit, a little bit of wind. Don't think the wind will cause him to go down there, but. Same expression on the face of Verma. Let's see how they respond. Yeah. Oh, look at that, straight back up into the town and the we are from the crowd here in Rodeo Country. Yeah. Be way more solid, didn't it? Nice hold, nice and still. So 28 to start for Galantine. Let's keep an eye on that wind. Is that playing a part? Is it just a little gusty? Well, he's hit the 9 for a 27, so Verma trailing after the 
fast end here. And it's still a very curious look on the face of Braden Galantine. He's got his wife in the box, Tanya Galantine. Picked up bronze in the women's compound. She was shooting for Denmark, of course. Uh, quite interesting to see she's wearing a, a USA top. Uh, it looks rather large on her. <laughs> well, yeah, your coach in the box has to wear the same uniform, I believe. So, there are kind of differences for male and female athletes, but you need to be wearing the same team top. We'll take a look back over that. A couple of curious arrows to start for the pair of them. Uh, Galantine correcting back up into the 10, as did Verma, and they both shot nines to the last. So, Galantine with the slender one point lead. Verma will shoot first in the second end. It's just that the wind has died off again completely. There's just nothing at all. You need to keep an eye on that. Still a little bit low, so we need to make a further adjustment. So Braden uses a little finger on his release aid to get it moving, set that shot off. I'm using a thumb trigger. So that wrap around and then just using his back tension. Beautiful shot. Braden's hinge, see that little finger, putting it around, rotating it, setting it off. Nine. Drifting out from nine and a twenty-nine. Ooh, now that has been marked for a measure there. This is an important measure as well because I know it's only two points, but it makes such a big difference, not just to the scoreline, but also to the, the feeling, the confidence for both of the archers. For me, that was, I mean, way too close to call for me, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, points at this stage mean everything. I think that's probably in. I think it's touching the line, so if the judge deems it to be touching the line, it'd be marked up. And like you say, a one-point lead or a two-point lead, double the difference kind of thing. It's it's going to make a good impact for Braden. Okay, uh, we're going to get into a little bit of geeky detail here. If the arrow is not touching the line, but is as close as it possibly could be without touching it, won't the very fact that the paper target will bend in and make it look like it's touching the line. So what, how, how does the judge measure that? So the judge has to think about where the line would be. So the same circumstance, if there was a hole already there and you've got into the hole, then they would think about where the line was. So the answer was? I think it was. I think, he, I think he got it, yeah. Set number three, then two points, the difference. Verma shooting first. Yeah. Now, signs that perhaps Braden and Galantine's dialed in. Good grouping for Verma. Yeah, I think just making that adjustment then, perhaps overcorrected, needs to bring them back down again. Brain a little bit shaking, keeping them in the 10 though. He's gone for a measure, but that one looks even further out than uh, Galantine's measure. Dropped into the nine for Galantine for a 29. So, another important measure coming up here. This is huge. 29 for Braden Galantine for sure. We think it's 29 for Abhishek Verma. Well, I certainly do. But we wait for the measure. Not quite sure what the judge had to say to Braden. At this end, just to check in. We have ten, ten. Oh. 
sounded like 10, 10, 9. Certainly did. So 85 for Verma. 87 for Galantine, if we are correct. Well, Judge having a word with Braden Galantine straight after that last end, whilst the measure was going on. We don't quite know why, but we go into the fourth end, and it is the American that is leading by two points. Two ends to go. Verma will shoot first in the fourth. Just about to see that clear bubble in the front of that scope. Using that to make sure the bow is upright. Not happy with that, was he? As soon as it went, he might have just been aiming off. He might have felt different pressure, which wasn't quite right. Well, we go back to the judge, having a word with him as well. I mean, has he had to alter anything, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, the normal things that a judge might talk to you about is if you're starting too early, you've got 20 seconds on each side of the clock. You mustn't draw before your clock started. And the only other thing I can think of is maybe a high draw, but... Yep. It does look like it brings his front arm, front arm down. Yeah. I mean, is, are there limitations? You just absolutely can't have your front hand above... The oh arrow needs to be parallel. It can't be pointing up in the sky, which would happen if you started with your front arm up first. Verma finishing with another 29, and it's 29 as well for Galantine. And he can't get away from Verma, but the problem for Verma is he is struggling to catch up. I wonder whether he's going to be able to do it in the next. 116 plays 114. American there leading. Nothing in particular off about his shot by the looks of things. I mean, and a lot of them are going into that same spot, sort of one o'clock in, inside the ten ring. Yeah, I think we forget how small this little target is that they're aiming at. Yeah, he's had that one error low, didn't he? I think that was his first error of the match, actually, the eight low. And the others aren't far out at all, so, you know, just fine, fine margins. Verma trailing by two to Galantine. We knew one of these big names was going to go out when the draw was concluded last night. At the moment, it's Verma who's staring at an early bath here in Yankton. Again, just in those holes low, so something maybe not right in pressure, balance the shot. Brayton yep. also going low. We just can't see the conditions here are, are causing too many issues. We can't see the flags moving around too much. It's pressure, isn't it? Yeah. It's tension, it's stress. It's what it means. Season ender. Yep. And three points, the difference going into this final arrow. It would have to take a monumental mistake from Galantine here for Verma to survive at this quarter-final. Another nine from him for a 28 and a 136. Well, Galantine's gonna get more than seven here, surely. Yep. Great into the X for a perfect 30, his second of the match, and a 146 plays 142 for what, in the end, looked a much more comfortable victory than it actually was. But Galantine is through, Verma is out, and uh, a warm and gracious congratulations from Abhishek Verma. Very popular on the circuit, as is Braden Galantine, especially on home soil. And he is through to the semi finals.
we take a look back on the highlights of that match. Valentin starting with a, a low hour actually that he wasn't very happy about into the nine, but Verma also going low and into the eight. Galantine though finished off with a perfect 30 and is congratulated by his Danish wife, Tanya Galantine. Time now for the fourth and final quarter final here in Yankton, South Dakota. Compound men competing for a big prize pot here. And it will be the USA again going up against Italy this time. Another big one here, Chris Schaff is the world number three, actually ranked second for this competition. And one of the favorites going up against Federico Pagnoni, the world number 13, who was a points qualifier. Schaff actually uh, came in to this tournament uh, as a points qualifier as well, the number one points qualifier, but really is the favorite here. Yeah, he's been really consistent, hasn't he, this year? Bronze at the first World Cup and a silver at the third. Yep, lost at the second in round two to Sir, uh, Federico Pagnoni. He's gonna shoot first. Sporting fabulous handlebar moustache these days. Start from both of them. Brilliant start from Chris Schaff. A perfect to get him underway. Matched by Federico Pagnoni, the pair shooting out of their skins. And Nikki, we've seen this uh, throughout, apart from in that last quarter final, the, the quality of the very first three arrows set so high. Yeah, you just got to get in there, you, you know, right from the beginning because as soon as you lose points, you're taking the pressure off your opponent. So you've got to keep them in there as much as you can. I know it's easier said than done, and of course everyone's trying to, but yeah, brilliant start from both of them. Quite different in their postures, aren't they? Chris Schaff really leaning back, Pagnoni much straighter in his sort of stance. A lot of weight on the front of these bows. Built up to put a lot of weight on that front bar, you can see. And a side rod helps them hold the bow still. Well, nothing between the pair. USA versus Italy, Schaff versus Pagnoni. Schaff starting in number two. Both these guys shooting their back tension, see the thumb off the peg, just pulling through, rotating that release aid till it breaks. bit of shaking in that shot for me. I could just see the nerves coming in. Dropped it low, just out the 10. Opportunity then for Chris Schaff. Oh, he's put it into the nine. And 
and those opportunities come. It is all about whether the athlete can take it or leave it. But look at that into the eight from Pagnoni. And that is a bit of a disaster by the standards these two have been setting. 29 for Khrushchev. He's, he's taken the lead. Sporting that handlebar moustache, Khrushchev. He's certainly taken a grip of this quarterfinal. Amazing uh, loss of form, you have to say, from Pagnoni. Anything in particular you see? That's that second now, right? Second one definitely looked like a little bit of nerves, a little bit of shaking, even from Chris Schaffer, if you can see through his sleeve, shaking away. But there's so much at stake here, the biggest prize pot ever. Well, it is just two points, the difference. But Christian has got the lead now, and Pagnoni has to forget about the eight in the last bend. Shoots first in the third. This with the quick chest up posture. His front shoulder quite low, so very different in their techniques. Great close up of that thumb off the peg, just relaxing the hand on the back tension. He's just pushing and pulling, creating that balance. Great finish, great recovery from Pagnoni for a first, sorry, a second perfect from him. Chaff on for the same. And pulls it out to the left. And that goes to 88 points. The gap has narrowed by just the one point. Brady Ellison in the coaching box on the scope. And actually giving some advice to uh, Chris Schaff about where his arrows are going. He did make an adjustment to his sight, Chris Schaff. Yeah, it's really important to know where they're going, so you can make those adjustments. As I said before, you know, groups are king, so you can move a group around. You just need to know where that centre of that group is, maximise your chances of getting them in the middle. That group from Chris there, we just saw high left generally, so make that little adjustment, give yourself the best chance of them hitting the middle. Well, what two points has become one. That is the gap between the Italian and the American. Pagnoni trails against Schaff. Pagnoni will shoot first in the fourth. He'll want to get at least one back here. Adjustments. Nice. Oh, shooting much quicker now. points there, another opportunity for Schaff to move on, another perfect, his second of the match to move three clear going into the fifth and final end here, 
he's in massive control. He's even communicating with people in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, you know, he's got Brady behind him, giving him some positive words you know, through shot process, keeping his brain on track, and yeah, he's relaxing between ends, which is good. You know, you need to try and get rid of that nerves and anxiety that's going to be there. That's natural. You want to win, so you're going to be nervous, but it's all about refocusing then before you go back on the line. Paige Pierce in the crowd there with Sarah Van Der I think I even saw Jim Lutz in there. Quite a few of the Americans have stuck around here in Yankton. Just clipping the ten line there. And Chris Schaff is so laid back in his shot. Can you see the string on his chest? He actually makes contact with him. Shaking, a little bit of nerves into the nine. Good finish from Pagnoni though, a perfect from him for a one four five. But as you can see, a nine is required for the win. Hasn't shot below that. And he's just about clipped the nine, done enough to take it by a single point. Chris Schaff has made it through. A bit squeaky at the end, but he has done it. Well, we now have our semi final lineup, and it will be Schaff going up against his teammate, Braden Galantine. That should be an interesting one. I wonder if. Brady Ellison is going to be in the box for Schaff because Galantine, of course, has got his wife Tanya in the box for him. And will the two archers just go man to man? Good performance. Pagnoni wasn't able to cause an upset. And Chris Schaff is through to the semi finals. And certainly that young lady there thinks it's fantastic. take a look back at some of the shots. There were some curious ones in there. I mean, you talked about the tension getting to Chris Schaff at the end there. Yeah, it was definitely a little bit shaking. I mean, that 20, uh, 28 on the last. So, you know, can he hold this together? He's going to have more pressure going into the semi. So all the way through, he's got to stick with that shot process.
bubbling away nicely here in Yankton at the 2021 Hyundai Archery World Cup final. It's semi-final time and we have the world's number one going up against the world number two. Well, interesting, the uh, stadium announcer seems to be giving the athletes nicknames and uh, the young Matthias Fullerton seems to be something to do with ice. I imagine a reference to him being ice cold and like, you know, just ready to go out there and win. But he's smiley, happy, you know, having fun. Maybe it's the shades. Maybe it's the shades, who knows? They are ice blue, of course, those shades, so. Uh, good stuff. Mr. Perfect there. Got it on his belt. Mike Schlosser is world number one. Going up against Matthias Fullerton, the world number two in this semi final. It's all smiles from Schlosser as well. Established on the circuit. Fullerton has burst onto the scene this year. This is huge. Good start from him. Nice solid shot. Nice hold. Good execution. A little bit wild. Shots are on his thumb trigger. Got a turn on his hinge. Perfect start for Mr. Perfect. And after a sighter of a nine, it's a 29 for Matthias Fullerton. So again, the quality is very, very good here. Martin Damsbo on the left, 2013 champion of this tournament. In the box with Matthias Fullerton, it's uh, Gabby Schlusser, formerly Bardo, in the box with her husband Mike Schlusser. We've seen some nervy moments from Mr. Perfect, and I think Fullerton, after that nine, he just doesn't seem to get disturbed by anything. We talked about this in his quarterfinal. He, he moves on from a mistake or, or a stray arrow. The first arrow is always going to be a sight so when it in any competition anywhere in the world. Um, so getting a nine is pretty good, and then he's moved on from that and got two tens. I can't see him flapping. He doesn't show any signs of that. I mean, he's 18 year old, and you know sometimes that's the best thing in the world because you don't have those bad experiences. You're just out there having fun, seeing what you can hit. Well, second end, Fullerton trailing by a single point. His very first arrow. We'll shoot first in the second. He slushes low pin in the middle of his sight, using that to aim accurately with. is wrapped around his scope. Oh. Hitting his other arrow, getting deflected out, really unlucky. Shooting, 18-year-old. 
going to draw level at the very minimum. Uh, look at the response, though, from Mike Schlusser. Those nerves that we thought may rear their ugly head haven't done so here so far. And a pair of them are on a 59, having dropped one point each. Shasha looks relaxed. He looks calm. Yeah, he really does. Um, I mean, that pressure builds, isn't it, through the match. And Fullerton's got to push him all the way. He's got to put that pressure on him because, you know, when we have seen a little uh, deviation, shall we say, from Mr. Perfect, well, that tends to come towards the end of the match. And quite often, even the last hour of the match, he struggles to close up. You know, that's more when he's on for his 150s. Um, but Fullerton's got to keep the pressure up. So all square in this thrilling semi-final between world number one, Mark Schlusser, and world number two, Matthias Fullerton. Nothing between the pair. So Mr. Perfect will get his third end underway. Flat back elbow, not in line. It's not bent through the wrist. Fullerton's elbow, dead in line, full alignment. Yeah, Looked like one of those shots that just surprised him a little bit. Straight in the 10 though. Second perfect 30 from Mike Schlusser after the first one in in number one. Puts him on 89. And a nine at the start of that. He's a 29. And a total of 88 for Fullerton. So again, Schlusser has pulled away into the lead. Um, Nikki, how can. Um, course how can an arrow surprise you <laughs> well this is back to the unconscious shot versus the conscious shot so <clears throat> an unconscious shot is a surprise because you don't decide to shoot now um, so it's gonna happen within you know a second or two but you know I guess he kind of looked unhappy you know where he was aiming it might not have been exactly where he wanted to be so he just looked you know kind of shocked at the, that point that it broke there but they went in the 10. So quite often these archers, they know that feeling so well, their body will make an adaption and make sure even if they were aiming off slightly, they can still get it right to the middle. Well, 88 plays 89. Both these archers will definitely be looking to hit the middle in end number four. Flags moving a little bit again. Nothing down to talking yep. him through the shot. Positive words that he wants to hear that help him make that shot. <laughs> again, just at that you know, little surprise of wasn't perhaps quite where he wanted it to be, but did enough to get it in there. Great response again from Fullerton, keeping the pressure on. But cool as a cucumber. Matthew Schlosser goes to 119, stays a point ahead of 
his rival here, Mateus Fullerton, as we cleared through four ends here. Well, now, as we look at Martin Downsbury, just checking the arrows that have been returned to Fullerton, now the agent. Now, it now really is where the pressure starts showing. Look at Fullerton smiling, waving to someone in the crowd. He is very, very relaxed indeed. Are we starting to feel the pressure build a little bit for Mr. Perfect? I mean, he's got that one point lead, so he's in a fairly good place going into this final end. Um, but anything can happen here. Just one point can make all the difference. So Fullerton's got to go out there. Like he's doing the right thing, staying relaxed. But he's got to refocus now, get back in there and start with some tens. Time for the fifth end here of this semi-final. Mateus Fullerton trailing by a single point. Needs to put some big scores down to put pressure on Mike Schlusser. Yep. Everything on that target face. Bit to the right. A little bit shaking, slightly longer hold, but next ring. Good, looking solid, nice follow throughs. Well, two of the biggest arrows, the lies coming up first, Fullerton. Little bit of a shake there and a 29, that leaves the door open and nine will be enough for Schlusser to go through and it's right in the 10 and what a grouping to finish on, giving him a huge amount of confidence going into the gold medal match. Mike Schlusser has dropped just one point in his victory over Matthias Fullerton and smiles all around. They, the pair of them seem to know that they are gonna be going up against each other quite a lot in the next few years. Uh, and it's a good, strong, friendly rivalry. But on this occasion, it's Mike Schlusser that's made it through. Yeah, I mean, Fullerton's come out this year, world number two already, so, you know, he's going to be up there for a good while to come now, and Schloss is going to have to get used to facing him and, you know, not finding a problem today, shooting really, really well with a 149. Yeah, brilliant performance from him. He will be in our gold medal lineup. We will see Matthias Fullerton again in the bronze medal match. We've got one more semi-final to come to find out who the pair of them will be facing. We take a look back at a brilliant match between Mike Schlusser and Matthias Fullerton. Fullerton dropping just three points through his 15 arrows. Mike Schlusser just dropped a single point. A bit of tension in the final end. Coming through for Matthias Fullerton. But what a great grouping for Mikey Schlusser. Time now for the second semi-final in the compound men's and the Archery World Cup final here in Yankton. Well, what a lineup we have. It's an all American affair in America in one of the famous archery towns. Chris Schaff here with Brady Ellison backing him up as coach. And 
Her shaft goes up against Braden Galantine, who has his wife Tanya in the box. Galantine looking mean and serious and up for business. Place in gold medal match up for grabs. Chris Schaff is going to get us underway. Great start from him. Definitely got that sight mark right this time. Solid, but a long hold. Difficult to see, might just be touching the line. Well, the pair of them inseparable through the first end. Anything standing out for you there? I mean, they're both looking pretty solid. Yeah, I think we just need to wait for the call on Chris's arrow. That second one, we couldn't really see where it landed because of the angle of the arrow shaft. So just make sure what that official confirmation is. But both looking pretty solid in their form. Yeah, that's in, isn't it? Peyton was like burning a hole in the target with his eyes after that first shot. Well, 29's a piece for the pair of them. separate them. Look at their stance, both of them really close together. Almost come a bit of a fashion thing, I think, really, having your feet so close together. Can you get enough stability from that? Tens. Well, Nikki, you coach. I mean, what would you say to an archer about stance and how far your feet should be apart on the shooting line? I'd be kind of shoulder width. You know, you see a lot of compounders at the moment have them quite narrow, and you know, if you are getting blown around, is that as stable as you can mm. be? I mean, conditions right now are not too bad at all. They've been excellent, haven't they, today? But I get your point. If you if it's blowing out there and you've got a wide base, it's going to be very tricky to stay still. Yep. Schaff getting his first perfect and a 59. Yep. And Galantine now for his first perfect. Interesting to see his release aid as well. Galantine, a bit unusual compared to everyone else in the field. Yeah, he's shooting it by putting like his little finger on the back and just pulling that round and that helps rotate the release aid and makes it go off. So yeah, it is, it is unusual, a little bit different, <laughs> clearly works. Well, saw Tanya Galantine talking to her husband in the coaching box, and that's uh, Brady Ellison supporting, yeah. sporting a same win face mask. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that's in reference to Doc Holliday, a sharp shooter in the UK Corral. Probably quite relevant to him, needs to be an accurate shooter. Certainly not in Texas, though, up here in South Dakota. And these two Americans will have the support of the crowd behind them. We have a happy
captains. One of them will be going for bronze and one of them will be going for gold. So watch that little finger on the top of the release, just help them rotate it round, setting it off. Using his whole hand, using his back tension, so really say he rotates and goes. He wasn't happy. He just knew, didn't he? The balance wasn't there, or he was just slightly off in his aim in, and Chris just helping his arrow back onto the arrow rest. Consecutive perfect. Yep. Oh, he in the middle of a 28, means that he has fallen behind by two and he's shaking his head already. Mustn't dwell on it, he's got to carry on shooting, but look at the smile on the face of Chris Schaff. Again, very relaxed, communicating with people in the crowd. Yeah, it's important between these ends to relax as much as possible. You can't keep up that level of concentration and also the nerves kind of build, you know, having that time out just to relax and switch off a bit before you refocus and get back on that shooting line. Well, he's got Brady Ellison in the box with him, also a uh, kind of calm, cool, collected character, full of life. But is it usual to have a recurve in a compounder's box? I mean, does it... What can Brady Ellison tell Chris Schaff about compound shooting? <laughs> it's not about telling him technique at this point or how to shoot his bow. It's all about controlling your mind and all this tension. What's at stake? Well, what's at stake here is a place in the gold medal match. Braden Galantine's fallen two points behind and will shoot first in the fourth end. Needs to rectify things straight away here and starts with a 10. Like slightly lent back with that shot, slightly higher in the 10. Yep. Braden not looking happy with these shots. They're not feeling like they he wants them to. <laughs> we'll fly wandering down the shaft of <laughs> Chris's arrow. Well, just what the doctor ordered. Put some pressure down. Second perfect for Galantine. One, one, seven. And just pulls that one out wide. And so Galantine closes the gap by one because Schaff drops a point. That fly nearly took it as well, didn't it? <laughs> Just potentially showing a little bit of tension there from Chris Schaff at the finishing line, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, just dropping a point, you know, he's going to be aware of that and he can't afford to drop points with Braden Gelatin on the other side of him. Get a good view of Gelatin. Shaking his head, he's still thinking about that drop point, the drop points in the last end. Oh, it looks like he needs to move on there. Uh, I think he's in the present. I think he's the shots he's shooting right now aren't quite how they, he wants them to be. He thought those were going to go low, trying to raise his arm up and get them in the 10. He did enough, but he's just not happy right now, and that's not a place you want to be in. You've got to reset your mind, get back into those normal thoughts and feelings. And will you be able to... You know, drive some motivation out of the fact that he has, despite not shooting well, closed the gap by a point. Yeah, it's definitely going to help, but the score doesn't matter. Stick to the process. Well, last chance here for the process to work for Galantine. One behind, fifth end of this semi final. Yep. Ten A 
Yeah, take an intention now. <gasps> Gone low. And the door opens again. Nice shot, more solid. Important arrow, this one. That's exactly what he needed. He had to put the pressure back on Galantine. Well, it's going to change hands once more after this shot into the 10. Big pressure, a third perfect for a 147. A 10 required to force the shoot off now. This one, he's dropped it into the nine. And from a winning position, Chris Schaff has put in two nines in the fifth end. And Braden Gelantine's put in a perfect 30 to go through to the gold medal match. It was all there for the taking, but Braden Gelantine clung on to his process and he's through to shoot for gold. Well, how quickly things can turn around as we get confirmation there of a win for Braden Gelantine. Hey, hey, it was easy. It's all cool and calm and collected now. It was nothing but easy. Um, that was a really tight contest. Yeah, I'm not sure at points that Braden knew how those were going in the 10, but, you know, he kept it together. He kept his mind on the job and managed to keep them in the 10 even when they weren't feeling right. So through to the gold medal match. We take a look back over that end and it was perfect for Galantine. Chris Schaff came in with a one point lead that dropped two nines at the critical moment and Galantine capitalized and will go through for a repeat of the last Hyundai Archery World Cup final in Moscow in 2019, facing Mike Schlusser of the Netherlands. Uh, coming up very shortly, it will be the bronze medal match. Well, we're down to the medal matches now. Mike Schlosser at the top of the draw came through. Adrian Gontier and Matthias Fullerton to make the gold medal match. Braden Gelantine had a tough one against Abhishek Verma before beating Chris Schaff. He'll go on to go for gold against Schlosser. But first up, it'll be the losing semi-finalist, Chris Schaff of the USA against Matthias Fullerton of Denmark. Bronze medal match off, followed by the gold here, the last action for the compound archers in this rather peculiar season. Time now for that bronze medal match here at the Yankton 2021 Hyundai Archery World Cup final, where we'll see the losing semi finalists from Denmark and the USA go up against each other.
have it, the losing semi-finalist, Matthias Fullerton of Denmark going up against Chris Schaff of the United States of America. Nikki Schaff uh, will manage to snack, snatch defeat from the jaws of victory against his compatriot just a few minutes ago. Hasn't had much time to recover, uh, but um, he really does need to put that to bed, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does. He started strong in that match and he needs to come out, push that reset button and just stick with his normal process and do what he can do here. Yeah, it was all smiles at the beginning of his semi-final match here. He looks a lot more serious, but he's up against a young man with absolutely nothing to lose. Matthias Fullerton, just 18 years old, up against Chris Schaff from the United States of America. And it'll be Schaff to get us underway. Hitting his other arrow. Looking strong and solid. Yep. In the slick horror. Good shot. Yeah. Ten, ten, ten to start. Oh, perfect for Chris Schaff. First arrow for Fullerton has been marked for a measure. Yep. Ten, ten, ten. There's two and three into the ten ring. We just wait for confirmation on whether that first arrow is going to be marked a nine or a ten. Nikki, your thoughts? I'm pretty confident that's hit the line. I think that'll be marked up and be an equal 30. It's a little bit more serious here this time, isn't it? Like you said, he was quite relaxed in his semi. It all become a bit serious. Well, it brings us back to talking about Brady Ellison's role in his position there on the shooting line as coach. Shaft's clearly still thinking about <laughs> um, well, what he would probably call throwing away. The match against Gunnar can't be that harsh on himself, especially seeing as there's a bronze medal and a, a rather hefty check available to the, the bronze medalist. Absolutely, you know, there's nothing he can do about that last match now. He's got to get his head back into the game and understanding how you want to be as an archer is really important. Do you want to be hyped up? Do you want to be laughing? Everyone's got a difference. Well, Harry for Fullerton was marked up to a tent, so they both sit on a perfect score of 30 apiece as we go into the second end. Shaft's arrow just dropping off the rest, helping it on with his finger. Only get 20 seconds to shoot their arrows, so not a lot of time to reset. Different in their body positions. Fullerton well, much more square. Shaft just leaning back. He's got a string on his chest. Opportunity here for Fullerton. Can he keep his cool? Just about. That looked like a little bit of a wobble there, but 60 points. A perfect 60 for Fullerton. Two drop points from Chris Schaff for a 58. And all of a sudden, the 18 year old is in control. 
Yeah, he just looked like a little bit of nerves in that last shot, a <laughs> little bit of shaking, but he kept it together, kept it in that tendon, which is exactly what he needed to do to put that pressure back on Chris Schaff. We we'll take a look back there. Schaff pushing the first arrow in to a 10. Nice line of three arrows on the base of the 10 for Fullerton. Uh, Schaff dropping it low into the nine and then the second arrow across to the right just uh, below three o'clock. And that final arrow wasn't the most comfortable one from Matthias Fullerton but gets the fist bump from Martin Dansbo has the lead over Chris Schaff and Chris Schaff will shoot first in the third end of this bronze medal match. Can even the mighty Brady Ellison pull him out of this hole he finds himself in. Yeah. Yeah, looks solid, in movement, good timing, wasn't there too long. A little bit of body movement as that went off, but keeping that in the 10. So solid, no movement. Arrows hitting each other. Just put enough pressure on the Fullerton. Drop into the nines. Schaff here has an opportunity to do the same thing again. Great group. And what a recovery. 88. A 10 from Fullerton to maintain the lead. Can he maintain his composure? No, he can't. He drops two in set number three. And we are all square at 88 apiece. And that's all about the pressure from Chris Schaff, right? Yeah, I think so. And that is what we saw on that third shot in the end before. Uh, he just got away with it, didn't he? So, you know, a little bit shaking. I think a little bit, bit of an unbalance, really. Um, what we're looking at is the kind of reaction after that execution happens, rather than a smooth break of the front arm away from the back arm. It's almost like a little body rotation, and you can sort of see there's not quite the same balance he had before. Can we take a look back over that grouping? I mean, that's stunning. That's possibly the best group I've seen in the whole of this tournament. Yeah, it's incredible. All three of them touching each other at 50 metres. You know, these guys are making it look a lot easier than it is. And that will give him a load of confidence as well to get a group like that, won't it? Yeah, they all look good, didn't they? It was solid, and that's the main thing. Shot process is good. Fullerton versus Schaff for bronze here at the Open 2021 Hyundai Archery World Cup final. All square, Chris Schaff to shoot first in the fourth end. I've seen him come back well before. He's good at resetting. Yeah, on the hold. Yeah, I heard something rattle on his bow, and that is why he is checking everything. It didn't sound the same as previous shots. Well, that have unsettled him. Well, we see that he is still playing with the bow, but he has managed to get another perfect score. So he's got a little bit of time to have a look at that. What can Fullerton do here? He's got to keep his concentration long hold and gets a 30 himself, all square at 118. Well, you called it, 
Nikki, what do you think, her, you know, what is going on now with Shaft? Right this very second, he, is he, has he got a spare bow? Is he going to be perhaps trying to fix that one? It just sounded like a rattle, so um, the immediate thing he went for was his sight. So if your sight has become loose from the block on the bow, then the whole sight's going to drop, and so that's going to change where you're aiming. That's really important. Otherwise, it could be part of the the long rod system, a weight, you know, anything like that can c become undone or loosen anyway um, while you're shooting. Yeah, we've got a very good close-up of that. Is this the shot where, oh, it was the second one, wasn't it, where he mm -hmm. felt that there was something going on. Maybe he suspected something after the first shot. There, look. Like you say, on the site immediately. Well, whatever it was, it looks like he's fixed it. And it was just as distracting for him as it was for Fullerton. So remarkable that both of them came out of that fourth end with perfect scores. They're all square still as we go into the fifth. Three arrows each to see who's going to get the bronze medal here. It still sounds a little bit rattly, doesn't it? But in uh, head to head competition, no equipment failures. So we can't go off and go fix it. You know, you've got a timing, you've got to shoot within these timings. So from qualification round, yeah, you can go away and fix your equipment for 20 minutes, but you can bring a spare bow into the arena. And we see a lot of archers do that. There's no spare bow behind Chris Schaff. The tension mounts. Still looking at that bow. Fullerton's yeah. got to keep his concentration here. Yep. Yeah, and a great yeah. shot yeah. from him. Yeah. One arrow. Can yeah. these yeah. two be separated? Yeah. Uh, arrow having to be put back onto the rest twice then by Chris Schaff. Eating into his time. Yeah. But it didn't eat into his process. And a 30 puts the pressure back on the Dane. The teenager has to shoot a 10 here to force a shoot off. Movement, shaking, but he has managed just about to get that in. And a 148 plays a 148 in an absolutely brilliant bronze medal match here. And it means we're gonna go to a shoot off. Nikki, great match, but let's just go through what's gonna happen next. Okay, so they've tied on score. So we are gonna go to one arrow per archer. The closest to the middle is going to win. Uh, head shake and a rue smile from uh, Chris Schaff. All square confirmation there on the measurement. And what happens immediately now is the agents remove the arrows uh, from the target and we get brand new target faces. And both of them just dropping two points through a high quality bronze medal match. And Chris Schaff suffering from some kind of uh, not equipment failure, but uh, some issues with his equipment and doesn't have a spare bow. He's got a bit of time now to have a look at it, but it doesn't seem like he can spot exactly what the issue is. Yeah, I don't think it's phased him too much. It might have just been um, a weight on the end of a long rod or something that became undone. I can't hear it so strongly now either. So I think he's put that one to bed. He's, he's happy with, with what he's got and he's just got to put that behind him. Go out there, shoot the best arrow he can. And they're both trying to stay very relaxed there. Matthias Fullerton with Martin Damsbo getting the fist bump. It's a one arrow shoot off nearest to the center for a bronze medal at the Hyundai Archery World Cup final here in Yankton in 2021. And a nice bit of pocket money as well. One arrow for the lot. Chris Schaff will shoot first. Clean target faces up in case we need to go for a measure. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is the arrow you want on a shooter. Fullerton, can he better that? He's going to have to be right in the middle. Oh. It's not quite. It's a very, very good shot though. Just, I mean, millimeters out, but it does mean, well, subject to confirmation, uh, their body language says it all. 
A high five for Chris Schaff from both Fullerton and Damsbo. Chris Schaff has taken this one to the wire, but done it with an incredible arrow in the shoot-off. He's the bronze medalist here at the Hyundai Archery World Cup Final of 2021. There is confirmation. Chris Schaff has taken the bronze medal in the compound men's at this year's Hyundai Archery World Cup final on so home soil in Yankton, South Dakota. And Nikki, you said it. What an arrow for a shoot off. Yeah, I mean, that X in the middle of the target depicts the very center of it, and I think he might have been touching one of the parts of it, and for Fullerton to come and shoot an X himself, a great arrow from him, but wow, a really difficult arrow to face. It was indeed, what an incredible match from the pair of them. So, Paige Pierce and uh, father in the, the crowd as well, and he's a stunning arrow, a little smile on his face, no surprise there. Bulletin staying nice, cool, and shot a great arrow, but shakes his head and says, look, mate, that's, you know, you, you, you went like four, so four millimeters closer to the center than me, over 50 meters. I'm going to shake your hand. Congratulations. 18 years old, though, Fullerton. We're going to see more of him. Chris Schaff is the bronze medalist. Time now for the gold medal match in the compound men's here at the Yankton 2021 Hyundai Archery World Cup final. It is a repeat of the final in Moscow in 2019. USA faces the Netherlands. Well, they've both been here before, and they've both won it before. Schlosser was the one to win in Moscow two years ago. Nikki, can you split them? Oh, so impossible. I mean, Schlosser, maybe he's got the advantage here, but we've also seen him not shoot so well at the World Champs as well, and under real pressure, so Braden's really got to push him to the end. Three archers have won this competition twice, and you're looking at two of them. Mike Schlusser will start this gold medal match off. wasn't quite right as he shot it. Yep. Yeah. Braden looking calm and collected. Ten, nine. Ten. Good, ten in the well, good recovery from Schlusser for a 29. And this Highly skilled gold medal match. Dropping a point can be lethal, but Galantine was able to afford himself a smile. What happened there? I think he thought that might have been a lot worse than it actually was. <laughs> I think he felt he got away with it. So what would have happened? What, what, did you see anything in particular? It's such fine margins, so it sounds like the aiming, who's um, using his thumb to 
probably showed what he was saying, what he was aiming and how it was moving around. It just went off, you know, he's using that back tension, he uses his little finger just to make that release, really say rotate and go off. And he's not in control of that because it is a subconscious uh, release. So if your sight has wandered off to the side and it goes off, hey, you might get a nine. Yeah. Yeah, oh God, look at that. Phew. Yeah, I think you're right. Gone few. That could have been a lot worse. <laughs> and you look at uh, Mike Schlosser's arrows all high again. And uh, just one skipping out to the left, but grouping fantastic. Nothing between them. Schlosser goes first in end number two. Ten. Ten. Well, someone said ten as the arrow left the bow. <laughs> They're so different in their techniques. Braden, that pinky, and the release aid, rotating it round. Mikey with his thumb on the trigger. Not that normal alignment. He's probably a bit more bicep y because his elbow's out of line. Yes, ten is at nine. Left. Left low. Gunting dropping it into the nine. Shrugged his shoulders. Part, I think, of his process to just move on to the next shot. Yep. And straight up into the ten. Set, his wife in the box and, and look at Mikey that was a nice one Mikey very good for a perfect 30 and 59 points couple of stray arrows and a little bit of a reaction from Braden Galantine thoughts yeah I, he just knows this is slipping away already because you can't afford to drop this many points against Slosser um, you know 57 already dropped three points I mean You'd hope really not to lose that many points over the entire match. So he looks so determined, his eyes fixed on the target when he came in here, but already things are just starting to, to drift away from him. So he knows he's got to get out there and shoot all tens. Yeah, OK, he knows he's got to go out there and shoot all tens, but if he thinks it's already evaded him and Schloss is never going to drop enough points for him to get back into it, surely he can just relax now and just shoot. It's certainly one method. Yeah, well... He's training by two, shaking his head still. The, the body language is not conducive to high level shooting. Galantine, let's start in three of this gold medal match. And oh, that is going to go for a measure for sure. They actually marked it as a 10. Oh, no wonder. I think it's a 10. Thank you. Oh. The experts think it's 10. I'm going to stick my neck on the line and say, <laughs> I think that's going for a measure. <laughs> yep. Solid recovery. <laughs> he wasn't happy with that shot, the reaction, but straight in there. It's starting to get away from him. Another perfect from Mr. Perfect. An 89 for him. Guaranteed just he's just a bit lost, isn't he? I don't think he's lost at all. I think he's absolutely in negativity land right now. All he's doing is shaking his head. He's replaying in his mind what's happened before he needs to forget it. Like, he is such a great archer. He has been here so many times before. He just needs to put a line in the sand and get back into this match. I need to get down there and tell him. <laughs> Let's take a look. I mean, there's nothing in particular that, that looks like it's going wrong from, from a, 
a lay person's point of view, can you pick anything? Can you see anything? I mean, I just think it's such minute kind of movement, balance. It's just so tiny, you can hardly see it. But I mean, look at that pinky, right? That to me looked like maybe that just came off a little bit at the end. The thing with the pinky, I think it's a bit conscious in having to make that pinky work and pull that shot off. So maybe that's the issue. Well, we can keep an eye on it. He's certainly going to be trailing. And he shoots first. And end number four. Oh, that one close, and has that been marked for a measure? It has. Watch that pinky. of you that don't know what a pinky is it's the little finger it's a technical yeah. archery term obviously <laughs> it's the one you point out when you drink your tea Karim well if only, if only someone would make me a cup of tea <laughs> good finish there a 29 for a 115 provisionally still on for a perfect here we wait for the measure on the first one this arrow's gone into the 10, so we could be looking at 119, 115. For now, we wait for the measure, and it stays at 118. It's just so relaxed on this side of the shooting line, isn't it? And there's the, there's the tension, and you know, it's, it's so easy for us to say, you know, you can't dwell, you shouldn't dwell. <laughs> Um, but that is seemingly what's going on, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's hard when you want this so bad and you want to get back into it, you want to kind of correct those errors that you had, but yeah, you've just got to let go and move on. And these archers are super experienced in this. get a good look at the techniques of the two archers as we wait for the measure to be confirmed on Schlosser's first arrow. A fist bump uh, from his wife. With a 115 there for Galantine and there it is confirmed with a 118. Mike Schlusser, and that one's that gone left. Nice. And it's not even like these nines are going in the same place. You know, that shot looked nice. His rotation of his hand looked clean, and he was like, what yeah, is going yeah, on yeah. here? Why is it still yeah. going left? Well, start of the fifth, and he's still in trouble. Galantine came into it trailing by three. It's now four. Yep. Pushes that one into, a, into the ten, but shaking his head, he's not happy. Settle on silver here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Final error. Last arrow Ten of the season for Braden Galantine for a one forty four, a seven for back to back titles, and a history making third. Yeah. Oh, look at the class of Mike Schlusser here. Back-to-back -back Hyundai Archery World Cup final crowns for him. Following up from the win in Moscow against Braden Galantine. He's done it again. Needed a six there. He scored an eight. Here, he needed a seven and popped it into the ten. What a fantastic champion. And that's it, Mike Schlosser, number three. Hyundai Archery World Cup final titles for the man from the Netherlands. Well, Nikki, a thrilling contest uh, if you're supporting Mike Schlosser. A very tricky gold medal match for Braden Galantine. He can't wait to get off the stage here.
Uh, it will be disappointment for him, but he will look back on this and say, well, look, I got another silver medal, another Hyundai Archery World Cup Finals medal, uh, but it's very difficult in the moment. But Mike Schlosser, there have been question marks about his temperament in recent times, especially since coming out of lockdown, uh, but there's no sign of him capitulating his right to that name, Mr. Perfect. Yeah, what display from Mr. Perfect. I mean, you know, 148 in the gold medal match. So much at stake, so much pressure. He held it together really well. And yeah, congratulations to him. Third time to win this final and the first compound man to do that. Well, it's all smiles on that side of the shooting line for Mike Schlusser. The windsock there laying dormant. Didn't really play too much of a part today here in Yankton. Meant for some thrilling scores though. And Mike Schlusser taking back-to-back -back crowns at the home by Archery World Cup final. Of course, that marks the end of the compound season. Archers will take a well-deserved break now before getting ready for next season. It's been a marvellous tournament here and we're just waiting for Mike Schlosser to get into position in the mix zone because we are going to get a chance to Mike speak to him. Here we go. Congratulations, third World Cup final title for you. How was it against Braden today? Uh, it was awesome. Like I felt like our machining was good and I know that Braden is always a worthy opponent so I knew I, I needed to put my A game on. And I've walked up there and I felt really scared by myself and by my shooting, so I'm happy I could show it. Through all your three matches today, you were pretty much com comfortable out there, mm -hmm. hitting the tents. How do you prepare for it? Um, I to be honest, I prepared for the World Championship, so this was kind of straight afterwards. So I skipped the same uh, game plan and I uh, worked on that. And I think that works for me here. You're the first compound man to ever win three World Cup titles. Does it make you feel even better than as you are right now? Yeah, I didn't expect it at all. Like, uh, that's, uh, it feels good. How does this stand in comparison to any other title that you won? Uh, the World Cup final, like, it, it's because the, the eight best people in the world that year come together to compete. So like, winning this uh, puts a lot of, uh, like, I think uh, for me it, it means a lot because I know that the eight best archers are here. So winning from them uh, means a lot for me. Thank you very much, Mike, and congratulations. Thank you. Oh, interesting take. The eight best archers in the world are here, and it means a lot to, to beat them. But um, okay, he's absolutely fantastic, uh, isn't he? And he's still got bags in the tank. Yeah, I'd love to know what that game plan was. I'd love another question around. You know, what did he come here to do? How did he execute it? What you know? How, how did that go? And what will he do next year? Because he just seems pretty unbeatable. Yeah, he does. Uh, fantastic performance from him through the tournament here, coming through Gontier uh, and then Fullerton before taking out Galantine for the second time in succession at the Highland Archery World Cup final. Becomes the first man to take three of those titles in this discipline, the compound men's individual discipline. Uh, so history making again here on the compound day. Sara Lopez earlier on claiming her sixth crown time now for the last of the action in the compound season it's time for the victory ceremony here in Yankton oh, getting that. two Americans will be on the podium they will be flanking an outsider from Europe go the bronze medal goes to the world number three Chris Schaff who went in 
to his semi-final fifth end, leading by a point. But dropped two to Braden Gelantine. Managed to dust himself off and come back to beat Matthias Fullerton in a thrilling shoot-off. Getting as close to the centre of the target as you need with a final arrow. And that secured him a bronze medal and a cheque for 6,000 Swiss francs. Well, the man who beat him, Braden Galantine, picked up the silver medal two years ago at this competition in Moscow. And it will be a repeat for him. Silver here in Yankton and a cheque for 12,000 Swiss francs. Medals and cheques being handed out by executive board member of World Archery and it's the mayor of Yankton who's handing out the carved feather. But he's been absolutely on the money here. He won it in Moscow in 2019 for the second time and he now makes history here in Yankton. Mike Schlosser is the Yankton 2021 Hyundai Archery World Cup final champion in the compound men. A fabulous trophy to pick up there. He's not got enough hands for the check, the trophy and the watch. He's going to have to put something down. It's a nice check as well for 24 thousand Swiss francs and let me tell you that's a lovely watch <laughs> history making Mike Schlosser champion of the Hyundai Archery World Cup final in 2021 let's celebrate with his national anthem Well, brilliant stuff here. Mike Schlosser, top of the pile again at the Hyundai Archery World Cup final. And again, beating Braden Gelantine in the gold medal match. Chris Schaff collected himself after a disappointing loss in the semi finals to pick up the bronze medal. And that is the compound archery season done and dusted. Well, certainly the international season done and dusted. Here on the banks of the Missouri River. And here are the final rankings. Matthias Fullerton, he's a sensation, a teenage sensation from Denmark, finishing in fourth place. But we're going to see a lot more from him. Big matchups saw Braden Gelantin knock out Abhishek Verma in the first in the first round in the quarterfinals, the third quarterfinal. But it has been tremendous to get back to this fantastic sport. As we take a look back over the quarterfinals of the last of the international events of 2021. Nikki, we've seen Mike Schlosser. We've seen some wobbles this season. No sign of that here. Absolutely not. He came back strong all the way through this final day and really, really impressive. So is this man here, Matthias Fullerton, has really stormed onto the scene been a mixed bag of a day for the USA but two men on the podium this is one of them silver medal in Moscow in 2019 and has repeated that here taking the silver Chris Schaff lost out to Galantine in the semi-finals having led going into the fifth end but managed to pull himself back together to take out Fullerton for the bronze medal So Schlusser here with these amazing shots. You look at that target and the, the X ring inside the 10 ring, absolutely peppered. He went up against Gelantine in the final, a repeat of the Moscow final. And 
despite the semi-final win coming from behind against Chris Schaff. Braden Gelantine allowed himself to get a little bit lost and a little bit negative. Schaff came back after that loss to take the bronze, but the money was all on Mikey Schlosser in the final, taking a 148 and making history by winning this Hyundai Archery World Cup final for a third time. Well, that's it for the compound action here in Yankton. Thanks for joining us. Come back tomorrow for some recurve action.